Hello everyone and welcome to PlayStation Access. My name is Ash and today we are on a whirlwind adventure through the best open world games on PS5, as selected by us. Expect fantastical realms of myths and monsters, distant futures where mountains and machines loom in tandem, and neon-soaked cities absolutely covered in loads of cybernetic bits. Lovely. Just to note, we've only considered games with a native PS5 release, but there are plenty of excellent PS4 open world games you can play on PS5 through backwards compatibility. And, lucky you, we have a whole list of those on our channel already, so make sure to check it out. Of course, with so many fabulous games, this is not a definitive list, just a correct one. So make sure to leave any extras you'd add in the comments below for everyone to enjoy. Right then, here we go. These are the top 10 best open world games on PS5. First on our list is Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, a launch title for PS5 that showcases a wintry vision of Marvel's New York. Playing as Miles Morales, the newest initiate to the Radioactive Spider Superhero Club, the game is all about balancing power and responsibility, as we all know you can't have one without the other. Left to protect the city as Peter Parker heads abroad, there's plenty of time in between fending off the game's villains to take in its characterful world. Whether that's heading into your local bodega and taking Spider-Man the cat out for a swing, or perching atop the Avengers Tower to admire the view. Now, this is an open world that sparkles in every small detail, but there's no feeling that compares to the way you traverse it. Masterfully thwipping your way between buildings, performing acrobatic stunts in midair, and then catching yourself on a perfectly timed web is a routine that never gets old. Plot in frequent breaks from saving the city with Mars's new bioelectric venom abilities to slingshot yourself across the skyline once again because, hey, marveling at how fluid the whole experience feels is irresistible. Obligatory mention of the fact that the Peter Parker starring Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered is also on PS5 and also 100% worth your time, if not a whole entry of its own on this list. If you're yet to play either game, then do not wait. Finish this video, but then go, go! How are you drinking? Very, very carefully. All right, buckle up, everyone, as I'm about to tell you how good Horizon Forbidden West looks again, just in case you didn't hear me the first 386 times. Newcomers to the channel, I welcome you with a rite of passage in this evergreen comment. Horizon Forbidden West is gorgeous. Speaking of evergreen, the Forbidden West is about as lush and verdant as any gaming world gets. I'm talking serious flora. This far future sees Earth now populated by machine animals and clusters of tribal humans, surrounded by the poignant ruins of our current civilization and threatened by a corruptive blight. Enter Aloy, determined and intrepid to put things right, traversing mountains with impressive parkour moves, gliding through skies with her shield wing, and crossing deserts on the back of her claw strider. It's important to walk as little as possible when you're saving what's left of the world. From thick, boggy jungles to proud, snow-capped mountains, this open world is like flicking through the pages of National Geographic Robot Edition, all brought to life by the game's secret weapon, a truly sophisticated and compelling sci-fi story. If you need any more reason to dive in, just wait until you see 3040's take on Las Vegas. When it comes to Geralt, are you Team Henry or Team Liam? I'm neither. I'm Team Me. I'm Geralt, the white-haired monster slayer, as comfortable dealing death as I am dealing cards. Adds a whole new meaning to getting decked. That's the beauty of CD Projekt Red's open-world masterpiece. It fully puts you in the Witcher's shoes. Or no shoes, if your Witcher likes to ditch his clothes. Don't want your kind here. And thanks to the shiny PS5 update, it now delivers a visual feast as scrumptious as the Bloody Baron's snack table. Honestly, there are few fantasy open world games with as much range as The Witcher 3's, populated with rural, swampy villages and windswept forests for Geralt to explore in the search for his adopted daughter Ciri. Almost a shame to wreck that pristine snow with monster viscera. But wreck them you must, as The Witcher 3 is packed to the drowner gills with monsters from Slavic mythology and humans driven by desperate times to desperate measures. 
It's a world where even the prettiest vista can be interrupted by the telltale roar that signifies the start of Geralt's working day. At least there's plenty of places to soak up the views when all the brutal monster slaying gets a bit much. Though seriously Geralt, put your togs back on, we've talked about this. There are bigger worlds on our list than Death Stranding's United States, but few where you get to know every hill, forest and bog so intimately. And if it goes really wrong, the occasional waterfall. It's as much cross-country hiking sim as it is apocalyptic thriller as you pile up a Jenga tower of precious cargo and nervously eye up every contour of the land to avoid tumbling into a pile of smashed treasures and then picking it all up and doing it again. And then again. I really hope there wasn't any lasagna in there. Coming from the bonkers brain of Hideo Kojima, what else would you expect? Playing as Sam Porter Bridges, a <coughs> full-bodied performance from Norman Reedus, you clamber across serene mountain ranges, reuniting a shattered society through the power of next-day deliveries. Death Stranding seems like a uniquely isolated experience in its stretches of haunting open terrain, but that only serves to make the interactions you do have even more meaningful. By sharing structures and resources, the game's collective players rebuild America's infrastructure bit by bit, making the game feel like a community of parallel universes all intersecting to help each other and offer moral support. Is it silly to get emotional about seeing a motorway being slowly built? Well, best dry your eyes, you'll soon have bandits and BTs come to ruin your adventures and remind you how dangerous this contemplative journey really is. And with a much-anticipated sequel on its way to PS5, what better time to lace up your boots and experience Death Stranding Director's Cut? It's a thumbs up from us, and a thumbs up from him. Open world freedom has never felt quite as potent as in Elden Ring's The Lands Between. The Lands Between what, I hear you ask? Well, between this horrible dog that kills you here and that horrible tree thing that kills you there. When you aren't being munched, maimed and murdered, you can enjoy a high fantasy realm of magic and monsters that is truly your oyster. Or rather, your lump of tentacle goo on the beach, if you're keeping it accurate. Unraveling that ball of tentacle goo is near transcendental though, as Elden Ring slowly reveals a borderless, sprawling collection of vistas that are only limited by how far you're willing to venture out, or how far your health bar can carry you. With nothing in the way of map or quest markers, by the vague light of sights of grace you'll come across, the lands between are what you make of them. A fantastical story pieced together by what you find rather than what you're told. And what will you find? giant behemoths made up of rotting wood flesh, grafted spiders with too many limbs, gleaming knights on golden horses. It is all yours to uncover as you pick your destination and ride to it on the back of a spectral steed. Not even the concept of solid ground and sky above stops Elden Ring from delivering, with a map that reveals endless layers. Like a cake, yeah. But a cake made of monsters, spikes and poison. Boo. Well, hold your nose and eat up. For fans of open worlds, this is your must-play game. Our next open world truly blows. Uh, in the windy sense, of course. One tap of the DualSense wireless controller's touchpad in Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut and a breeze rustles through the trees and carries blossoms in a sight that never gets old. But we're not just here to admire a draft. As vengeful samurai Jin Sakai, you are out to reclaim the island of Tsushima from hostile Mongol forces and woo the occasional monkey with a flute jam session. Ah, so it's fine when he does it, but I whip out my trombone in Monkey World one time and it's a lifetime ban. There is no justice. Anyway, there are bigger threats than monkeys or mongols. The endless temptation of photography mode. This is a distraction for the ages. You can even control the number of birds in the sky. Look at that. Pity anyone who parks their car under that lot. 
It also explains why my PS5 hard drive is basically 95% pictures of pampas grass. But Jin's not just here to ogle. Cinematic showdowns have a bloodthirsty beauty of their own, less so for the other guy, I guess. But it's in the moments you discover a jaw-dropping aerial view from a cliff top, or a sun-dappled hot spring under a cherry blossom, or a nearly surreal-looking meditative haiku spot that truly showcase Ghost of Tsushima's visual splendor. Side quests are meaningful and fulfilling, and the pull of exploration is nearly impossible to ignore in this sublime iteration of feudal Japan. In short, this is just one big long treat in both looks and gameplay the whole way through. Okay, my little Doverkins, it is time for the one you've been waiting for, because there's no way we can head out into the open world of open worlds and leave out Skyrim. Specifically, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition that brought the game to PS5 on its 10th birthday. It's a party and everyone's invited. What a 10 years this has been. Set in the north of Tamriel as dragons return to the land, including the big bad Alduin prophesied to destroy the world, it's up to you to save Skyrim from both these scaly fiends and an ongoing civil war that threatens to tear the region apart. Yeah, yeah, very serious, whatever. You can get to that in your own good time though, because there's clubs to join. Shape your character through questlines in factions, such as the Religious Cult of Assassins, the Dark Brotherhood, the Fighters Association of Companions, the Sorcery Collective at the College of Winterhold, or the Guild of Thieves at, well, the Thieves Guild. One of them should probably steal a how-to book on novel naming conventions. The breadth and scope of interactions, locations, stories, and weird little plants to uncover in Skyrim is actually hard to comprehend and fit into this measly entry but this is the template for what fantasy open-world RPGs aspire to. Equip your spells, batter some reanimated skeletons, and bask in this brilliant slice of full-blooded fantasy goodness. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is often celebrated for capturing the thrill of Viking life, with all the mead quaffing and violently over-enthusiastic hugs that entails. But it's about time we reclaimed it as a proper Britain simulator. Come on, let's go drink. OK, it's the Britain of 872 AD, but I'd recognise that miserable weather anywhere. And look at that beach. You just know a kid has eaten a truly miserable ice cream there. Part of the fun is seeing our homeland get the historic treatment, even if our old haunts are yet to be invented. Probably for the best that our ancestors do sit this one out, though. You play as Viking invader Eivor, out to conquer and settle England through much limb chopping and the occasional bit of monk cosplay. This is a sprawling vision of the Dark Ages, complete with beautiful open countryside to wander through and treacherous seas to sail, populated with hordes of English folk to subdue, treasures to pillage and creatures torn from British folklore. There's plenty to be getting on with before even digging into the ongoing Assassins and Templars storyline that ties this Viking jaunt into the wider Creed verse. Valhalla is bursting at the fur-lined seams with side quests and beautiful vistas that draw you out into the furthest reaches of its map, and with no grumpy landowners to kick you out of their fields. Grand Theft Auto V has sold over 175 million copies to date. It might be harder to find someone who has not played it at this point. But that is not going to stop me from singing the praises of Rockstar's massive love letter to criminal mayhem, a world where you do all of the crime and none of the time. Whilst the story campaign is packed full of classic Rockstar mania, where you'll be tasked with blockbuster sequences like landing a plane inside another plane and shooting out tanks, it is the wild opportunities scattered throughout the city that make the game memorable. Create your own fun by base jumping or a trip to the cinema, or simply hijack a car and rack up as high a wanted rating as possible, either playing solo or in online multiplayer. This is a game appealing for its surreal take on realism, making what would be an everyday American city a hub of ridiculous escapades. Where else can you drive a meticulously crafted replica supercar and befriend a talking, disappearing dog in one sitting? 
What you're doing your civic duty? Okay, shit, show me. Finally, give your ocular implants a wipe as you're looking at Cyberpunk 2077, the electric cityscape where a body is just a concept. You are outlaw mercenary V, wrestling with an unwanted guest. Keanu Reeves has moved into your skull and is slowly killing you. Not the first time we've not been able to get Keanu out of our heads, but the stakes are admittedly a little higher in this version. Rip the thing out myself. No, wait. Really, it's an excuse to lose yourself in Night City, a playground of prosthetic cybernetic enhancements and all sorts of mechanical tomfoolery. It's a world you see from every angle, from the dive bars filled with the city's poor dreamers to the staggering heights best consumed with a glass of bubbly. You know Night City is the place to be when even Hideo Kojima himself hangs out there. Hey, I know the film. And it's not just a physical open world that you can explore by car or foot, but a virtual one you'll dive into and manipulate for progression. Cyberpunk 2077 is gritty, grimy, and totally mesmerizing to throw yourself into. Just watch out for the cyborg assassins with swords for wrists, yeah? There are some things even Keanu can't fix. And there we have it. Those are our picks for the best open world games on PS5. Which is your favourite? Any that you haven't played that you're excited to check out? What else would you add to this list? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more PlayStation goodness from the world of access, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.